Section 7.4, Basic Concepts of Probability. So for this section, we're mainly going to use the union rule for probability that states that if we want the probability of an event E, union another event, so our hint is when we use the word or, we want this or that to happen, um, we're going to use this rule. We're going to add the probability of the first event plus the probability of the second event and then subtract the probability of those two together. So, again, when we see the word or in the question, this usually implies that we're going to use the formula above. Again, spelling. If a single card is drawn from an ordinary deck of cards, find the probability that it will be a red or a face card. So let's let P of R equal a red card and P of F be a face card. So first we have to find what is the probability of obtaining a red card. Well, there are 52 cards in a deck and half of them, so 26 of them, are red cards. Let's add that to the probability of getting a face card. So the probability of getting a face card, there are 52 cards in a deck. The probability of getting a face card we determined from the last lecture that there are 12 cards in a deck that are face cards. And now we want to subtract, again out of 52 cards, um, how many of those cards are red and face cards. So we have hearts and we have diamonds that are red cards and there are three in each. So we have six cards that are red and face cards. Okay, so now we can we have common denominators, so we can go ahead and combine our numerators together. So 26 plus 12 is 28, excuse me, 38. 38 minus 6 is 32 out of 52. And of course, reduce when possible. We can divide each one by 4, so 8 thirteenths. If a single card is drawn from an ordinary deck of cards, find the probability that would be an ace or a club. So we're going to let uh, P of A equal our ace card and P of C equal a club card. So what is the probability of getting an ace card? Well, out of 52 cards, there are four cards out of 52 that are aces. We'll add that to... How many are club cards? There are 13 clubs in a deck. And now we have to subtract how many are aces and clubs. Well, there's only one card in the deck that is an ace and a clubs. So we'll subtract 1 over 52. Common denominator already, so all we have to do is combine our numerators. We've got 4 plus 13, which is 17, minus 1, which is 16 out of 52. Reduce that down, divide in half, looks like 8 over 26, and divide by 2 again is 4 over 13. So I've got some pictures of some dice here. This will help us uh, picture the uh, outcomes. Suppose two dice are rolled. Find the probability that the first die shows a 2 or the sum of the results is 6 or 7. So, what is the probability the die shows a 2? So, if the die shows a 2, we have six options. And the six options are here. Right? 1 and 2, 2 and 2, 3 and 2, 4 and 2, etc. So, we've got six options that the die shows a 2. And there are 36 options altogether. So we've got a 6 by 6. So 36 options altogether. What is the probability that the result is a 6 or a 7? So if the result is a 6 or a 7, we have ourselves 11 options. And the 11 options are highlighted here. We'll add 11 out of 36. So of the ones that I highlighted, how many could be uh, show a 2 and they are the sum of 6 or 7? So where the highlights 
connect together right here. There are only two options that result in that. So we have to subtract two of the 36 options. So now we can add them together. 6 plus 11 is 17 minus 2 is 15 out of 36 and reduce that to 5 twelfths. So suppose two dice are rolled. Find the probability that the sum of the results is 11 or the second dice shows a 5. So the sum is 11. There are two options where the sum is 11. Here and here. 6 and 5 or 5 and 6. So there are two out of the 36 options. We'll add that to uh, the die shows a 5. So our options where the die shows a 5 are here. And there are 6 of those options. So 6 out of 36. And then the possibilities where the result is 11 and showing a 5 at the same time is where they are highlighted together. So there's only one option, so we have to subtract that option. 2 plus 6 is 8 minus 1, so 7 out of 36. Sometimes it's easier to use the complement rule. And the complement rule says this. The probability of an event can equal 1 minus the event not happening, or the probability of the event not happening is equivalent to 1 minus the probability of the event happening. So let's practice using this. So if a fair die is rolled, what is the probability that any number but 5 will come up? So let's determine what the probability of 5 is. The probability of getting a 5 on a dice is 1 sixth. Then the probability of not getting a 5, so the probability of not getting a 5 is going to be 1 minus 1 sixth, which is the same as 6 over 6 minus 1 sixth, so 5 out of 6. And notice that 1 sixth plus 5 sixths would give one whole, so they should equal 1. The probability of the event not happening plus the probability of the event happening should equal 1. If two fair dice are rolled, find the probability that the sum of the numbers rolled is greater than 3. So let's choose the probability of the sum to be less than or equal to 3. That would mean we'd have to add the probability of the sum of 2 plus the probability of the sum of 3. So looking at our chart above, the probability of getting of our dice adding to 2, we have one option. So 1 out of 36. How about getting the sum of 3? Well, we have two options for getting the sum of 3, 2 and 1, and 1 and 2. So plus 2 out of 36. So if we add those together, that would be 3 out of 36, which is equal to 12. So this would be the sum of less than or equal to 3. Then we can find, if it's not less than or equal to 3, it must be greater than 3, right? So if it's not less than or equal to 3, it's greater than 3. So then we can take um, 1 minus 1 twelfth and get 12 over 12 minus 1 twelfth. So 11 out of 12. You could also find um, numbers that are greater than 3. Um, adding those probabilities together and get the same answer. It doesn't matter which way you, you, you take the route. If two fair dice are rolled, find the probability that the sum is less than, t than 11. So there's quite a lot of options, but there's also quite a lot of options, well, not as many options, if we were to find the probability of the sum being greater than or equal to 11, which would be, we'd have to add the sum of 11, probability sum equals 11, plus the probability of the sum equals 12. 
So the options were the sum equals 11 are these two options here. So 2 out of 6, 2 out of 36. And the sum equaling 12, we only have one option there. So 1 out of 36. So again, that's 3 out of 36, which is equal to 1 12th. So then if it, the sum is greater than or equal to 11, the complement would be that the sum is not greater than 11, but yet it is less than 11, which is what we're looking for. So we'll take 1 minus 1 12th, which is equal to 12 twelfths minus 1 twelfth, so 11 twelfths. Odds in favor of an event is defined by the ratio, the probability of the event over the probability of not the event, where the probability of not the event cannot equal zero, because we know in this world we cannot equal zero. So suppose the weather forecaster says the probability of rain tomorrow is one-third. Find the odds in favor of the rain. So the probability of the event is one-third. The probability of the event not happening is two-thirds. Because we know that they have to, one-third plus two-thirds is three-thirds. It has to equal one. Okay? And if we were to simplify this, these would cancel, giving us one half. So we'd write it as one to two, or one to two. If the probability of snow tomorrow is three tenths, find the odds in favor of snow tomorrow. So if it's probability of the event is three tenths, the probability of the event not happening is seven out of ten. These cancel, giving us three sevenths. So we'd write it as 3 to 7 or 3 semicolon 7. If the odds of favoring event E are M to N, then the probability of the event happening is listed here. And the probability of the event not happening is the formula here. So the odds that a particular package will be delivered on time are 25 to 2. Find the probability that the package will be delivered on time. So we're going to look at the formula for m over m plus n. So the first number is m, the second number is n. So we'll have it as 25 over 25 plus 2, which equals 25 over 27. Find the odds against the package being delivered on time. So it's not being delivered on time, which would be the second formula. So 2 over 2 plus 25, or m plus n, which is equal to 2 over 27. If the odds that a package will be delivered on time are 27, excuse me, 17 to 3, find the probability the package will not be delivered on time. So this is essentially saying 17 over 3. So 3 becomes our not, so yes and no. And then over, we have to add 17 plus 3, so over 20. If the odds in favor of a particular horse is winning the race are 5 to 7, what is the probability the horse will win the race? Well, we, this is the positive. The first number is the positive. So 5 over adding 5 plus 7 to be our bottom. So 5 out of 12. If the odds against a particular horse winning are 7 to 3, what is the probability the horse will win the race? So the odds against would be 3 for our numerator. And adding them 7 plus 3 would be our denominator. A table listing each probability outcome of an experiment and its corresponding probability is called a probability distribution. The following table gives the 2018 projected civilian labor force probability distribution by age and gender, according to the U.S. Department of Labor. 
Find the prob following probabilities. The probabilities are already figured out for us. We just have to use the table to pull the information. What's the probability that we are a female and 16 to 24 years old? So we're a female, 16 to 24 years old. The probability is 0 0.061. What's the probability that we are 16 to 54 years old? But it doesn't specify male or female, so we don't care about male and female. We'll go to our total. We are 16 to 54 years old, so we need to add those probabilities together. So 0 0.127 plus 0 0.634. Adding these together, 0 0.761 when we add them together is the probability that we are 16 to 54 years old. And this concludes section 7.4, basic concepts of probability.